Army Power and Energy focuses on three lines of effort. Soldier power, the power and energy a soldier carries to power all electronic devices. Basing power, the fuel, water, and energy to sustain our installations and base camps. And vehicle power, air, ground, tactical, and non-tactical, with a focus on better managing our fuel consumption. In the Army, we use energy in three different areas. The first is our soldiers are powered. They carry over 74 different kinds of batteries ranging from the size of an eraser to the size of a brick. And those soldiers need to be powered, their equipment needs to be powered as they go out on missions. Soldier power programs are focused on reducing the energy power weight that a soldier carries. Basing power is the kind of energy and the amount of energy we use in our bases both in our permanent bases and in our operational or contingency bases. The last area is vehicle power. And in the Army, we have ground vehicles and air vehicles. And we have vehicles that are tactical and vehicles that are non-tactical. So our vehicle energy programs are focused on reducing the amount of energy consumed and increasing the capability of that equipment. Operational energy is a key enabler across all three lines of effort. It's all about increasing our mission capability, being able to uh, provide more power uh, to those commanders on the ground. Because really, if you think about it, uh, a Ford operating base is nothing but a, a force projection platform. One of the challenges that we face as the Army, especially in Afghanistan or Iraq or these remote locations, is that our forward outposts need to be supplied with fuel and water, which can make up to 80% of the convoy weight, or the convoy resupply weight. So when we are reducing the amount of energy and water we consume, then that's fewer amount of convoys on the road. Right now, one in every 46 convoys suffers a casualty. So the better we steward our resources, consume less, deploy new technologies, then we are reducing the amount of casualties, and again, multiplying the amount of force that's available to complete the mission. After evaluations at Fort Riley, Kansas, the 1st Battalion, 16th Infantry Iron Rangers deployed to central Afghanistan with a suite of advanced soldier power capabilities designed to help reduce the volume and weight of their load. We have two of the solar type technologies we've integrated into our portfolio. One is a REPS kit, which stands for a Rucksack Enhanced Portable Power System, and the other one is a Soldier Power Manager. Uh, they're, they're a benefit to the soldier because they allow him to have a contingency or alternate power, uh, power source that's free. It has no logistics tail associated with it. So you've got basically two and a half to three pounds of equipment you can bring forward with you that can replace dozens and dozens of pounds of batteries if you had to bring them out there forward uh, without any kind of recharging ability. So it's a very cost effective, uh, it's very manpower effective, uh, and that's why soldiers embrace the technology. So basically, just open it up as if it were a picnic blanket. Plug in the power manager. And plug the power manager into the target device, which is in this case a military 2590, which is a rechargeable lithium ion battery. And it's 100% ready to go. So the smallest of the two blankets that I showed you only puts out 30 watts. That could easily recharge six, uh, six of, your, of your smartphones in, a, in a, between a four and six hour period given uh, different environmental conditions. So if you have peak sun, maybe four, four and a half hours, and you have a little bit, little bit of overcast, about six hours. So it's, it gives you the ability to recharge that, that commercial device uh, at the point of consumption, which is a huge benefit. So if you're gonna stop, take a break, you may as well get some trickle charge back into that phone. Or if it's completely dead and you have a life uh, threatening situation that would require you to turn that phone on to get communication, someone got hurt uh, out and about, then you could recharge that phone and have some capability. And you can scale those panels as big or as small as you want. Uh, the, the advantage is the bigger panel will give you more power, so it's a, it's a direct correlation between the size uh, and the energetic effects of those panels. The cornerstone of Army Power and Energy is net zero. Our bases today, our bases are very dependent upon the community. They're not as independent as they once were. And that is a risk to mission, and that is a vulnerability that we have. So to increase the resiliency of the Army, 
net zero energy means you don't use any more energy than you're able to produce on the installation. Net zero water means that you reduce the amount of water you use and use water in balance to the amount you inject back into the local aquifer. So you have a net zero water balance. Net zero waste means your solid waste doesn't go to the landfill, but you're recycling it and repurposing it. So the net zero program takes into account energy, water, and waste. Good morning, my name is Scott Clark. I'm the energy program coordinator here at Fort Carson. I'm gonna share with you some of the most recent successes here at Fort Carson in support of the net zero program. Under the net zero energy program, Fort Carson continues to partner with the Corps of Engineers and ensuring new facilities on the installation are designed to be energy efficient and integrate renewable energy technologies for life cycle cost effective. Behind me is the first photovoltaic solar carport built on Fort Carson. This was built as part of the construction project of a battalion headquarters for the installation, which is striving to achieve LEED Platinum certification. This 235 kilowatt system will generate about 400,000 megawatt or kilowatt hours a year of electrical energy for the post, which is about a half percent of Fort Carson's total energy need. This is one of five photovoltaic systems that is being installed this year through the Corps of Engineers on new construction projects. When it's all complete, the installation will have almost three megawatts of photovoltaics on the installation, which is about three and a half percent of Fort Carson's total electrical need. Under the Net Zero Waste Program, the Post is exploring different opportunities for waste diversion. One of the more recent successes is the implementation of a furniture diversion program. In the past, tons of old furniture was being disposed of in local landfills because there was no interest from buyers when the furniture was offered for sale by the Defense Logistics Agency. While the furniture is passed as serviceability according to Army standards, much of it is acceptable to nonprofits such as homeless shelters. This new program speeds up the process, allowing more furniture to be reused within the community instead of being disposed of in local landfills. Fort Carson anticipates that this new process will save the post up to $50,000 in disposal costs over the next year. Under the Net Zero Water Program, the post continues to explore ways to reduce water consumption and, where feasible, expand use of the Fort Carson non-potable water systems, similar to the system at the golf course. While the use of wireless urinals, low-flow toilets, and other low-flow equipment helps reduce water consumption, one of the biggest challenges is reducing irrigation requirements. Near the Gate 1 entrance to Fort Carson, the area has been redeveloped to include more air escaping techniques over the use of irrigated turf. Fort Carson is in an arid climate which makes turf areas very water intensive and the use of air escaping techniques more attractive. While a fair amount of water will be used to establish the area, in the long term water use will be significantly reduced. Fort Carson has significant challenges to reduce water based on stringent Colorado water laws, but even with those restrictions, the post has managed to reduce water intensity by nearly 40% since 2002, or nearly 7% since 2007, with irrigation improvements being one of the key contributors. Additional efforts Fort Carson is implementing under the Net Zero program include securing an energy savings performance contractor through the Corps of Engineers Huntsville, demonstrating emerging solar and biomass technologies under the ESTCP grant program, and identifying a possible non-puddle water system expansion opportunities and working to develop a net zero strategy for design and construction of a new combat aviation brigade planned for stationing at Fort Carson in 2015. These projects just highlight some of the successes and ongoing efforts at Fort Carson on its net zero journey. Hello, my name is Robert Lopez. I'm the Energy Branch Chief here at Fort Bliss, El Paso, Texas. Behind me, you'll see one of our uh, small scale renewable efforts on our way to uh, attaining net zero. What we have here is, what we have here behind me is a solar PV, that provides uh, generation approximately 100 kilowatts of AC power to the building. What we've done here is we've utilized the solar PV panels to provide uh, solar shading for our administrative buildings. As you can see behind me, we've taken advantage of the technology to provide uh, canopies for our parking lots. We're currently at Replica Swimming Pool, one of the indoor swimming facilities here on post. What we've done here is utilize the technology of solar thermal to help heat up the pools. Behind me you'll see approximately 9,600 square feet of uh, solar panels that we utilize to heat up uh, our local swimming pool. We're currently at the Stanford Dining Facility. Here at this dining facility we use a mix of different technologies to partially take it off the grid. Some of those technologies include solar day lighting, solar thermal, and solar cooling. Behind me we have 32 parabolic collectors with uh, solar tracking. With the heat generated from these parabolic collectors, we utilize it to uh, not only cool the building, 
but uh, also provide the hot water for its uh, daily operations. Hello, my name is Maricela Leiva, and I'm one of the electrical engineers working at the Energy Branch at DPW Fort Bliss, Texas. This is the dining facility for PCT2, and it was designed and constructed by the Corps of Engineers, and it achieved the LEED Silver Certification awarded by the U.S. Green Building Council. This facility incorporates the energy use, the lighting and water conservation, as well as the use of sustainable materials. Um, this facility got 34 approved points, and this is a positive example of achieving net zero at Fort Hi, I'm Angie Moncor, Fort Huachuca's Public Affairs Officer. We're here to show you some of our net zero sustainability projects. Come on, let's take a look. Since the 1970s, the Mountain View Golf Course has been irrigated with reclaimed water. After a complete upgrade to the irrigation system and conversion to a desert scape course in 2005, water savings average up to 56 million gallons per year. In 2001, the East Range Recharge Facility was constructed and recharges close to 130 million gallons per year of treated effluent from the Fort's wastewater treatment facility. In the last decade, Fort Huachuca has installed approximately 13 acres of artificial turf. These sports fields no longer require 13 million gallons of irrigation every year, and they actually harvest rainwater that can be reused or recharged into the local aquifer. In 1997, Fort Huachuca installed its first waterless urinal. To date, we've replaced all of our approximately 740 urinals with an average water savings of 91 acre feet per year. Fort Huachuca's traffic lights have recently been upgraded to LED fixtures. This small change has resulted in a $1,900 savings per month with one-third the cost in power and one-tenth the cost in labor to maintain. Across our installations, we are replacing 4,000 non-tactical, fossil-fueled GSA-leased vehicles with low-speed electric vehicles. And we are leasing more than 3,000 hybrid vehicles. With one-third of our non-tactical vehicles already hybrid, the Army is the largest user in the Department of Defense. Hybrid vehicles are 40% more efficient than conventional vehicles. When you take into consideration that the Army manages more than 80,000 vehicles daily, a 40% reduction in cost is significant. The Army is also developing drop-in energy-efficient engines to reduce tactical rotary vehicle energy usage and increase versatility and sustainability. The improved turbine engine program will provide increased horsepower and 25% improved fuel consumption to over 2,000 Black Hawk and Apache aircraft, while at the same time doubling their payload capacity. The Energy Initiatives Task Force is a dedicated group of Army professionals supported by subject matter experts drawn from energy and other federal agencies that's focused on deploying large-scale renewable energy projects on Army lands. We anticipate that the task force will make the Army a better business partner for the private sector. Critical for the Army's success is that we have to attract private sector investment into our projects. In order to do that, we have to streamline our business processes and make the Army more attractive to private industry. Well, this is important to the Army because the Army's energy is at risk, whether it's the energy on our installations or the energy in our operational environments. The Army must diversify its supply of energy. We have to secure that energy on our installations, and we have to get that energy at a price that we can afford over, uh, over the long term. The Army recognizes energy as a force multiplier and a vulnerability. Without energy, the Army stands still and silent. We're changing our culture so that every soldier, civilian, and family member in the Army is a power manager.